Amanda Mallon. Um, you know, as mentioned, um, I lead inclusive design at Microsoft. Uh, I'm a neurodivergent inclusive designer with dual arm paralysis, um, leading inclusive design at Microsoft and Open Style Lab, um, which is an incubator uh, for engineers, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and fashion designers to create adaptive clothing. Um, I switched into inclusive design and my arms became paralyzed at 22. You know, I look at disability and the World Health Organization looks at disability in a way that disability is caused by a mismatch between a person and a man-made experience. So it's not motor neuron disease that really caused my disability. It is the world around me that wasn't built with disability in mind, even though everyone experiences disability at multiple points of their lives. And I'm really disabled by design. I only ever feel disabled when I can't do something. And when that wasn't designed with accessibility in mind. So I decided to make my life's mission to redesign the world. Because creators like you choose to make these experiences either inclusively or not inclusively, and this is consciously or subconsciously. So how do we create a better world? Um, really, we need to engineer a better world. To, it requires an interrogation of how we design. So today, I'll be talking about inclusive design because this interrogation is a method and this method is inclusive design methodology. I just wanted to caveat that a single person does not know everything about inclusive design. Myself and Microsoft are beneficiaries of the great work that disability activists have done before, you know, myself um, and before Microsoft was even created. Um, our work in inclusive design is not to take ownership over inclusive design concepts, but to really use our platform to increase awareness of inclusive design. Okay, so after I have that caveat, I um, want to go into what inclusive design is. It's a methodology that enables and draws on the full range of human diversity. Design inclusivity doesn't mean we're designing for everyone. This is not universal design. Um, we're designing, you know, a diversity of ways to engage and for everyone to participate in an experience with a sense of belonging. There's three principles that really are anchored in all of our practice today, even with accessibility at Microsoft and inclusive design at Microsoft. Um, those three principles are recognize exclusion, learn from diversity, solve for one, and extend to many. Let me just move this over here. Okay, so recognize exclusion. I talked a lot about disability, but true inclusive design really is about all marginalized communities. And how do you identify what community that you should focus on first because they are, as you can see here, and then this doesn't actually cover everything, marginalized communities from gender to skin color to formal education, ability, sexuality, body size, housing, wealth. And how I tell designers and creators is to really focus on who is the most excluded from that dimension of diversity and try to focus on them. Uh, what we've done, um, and we've done this for education, ability, neurodiversity, mental health, uh, language, and somewhat gender at Microsoft, um, and we're trying to work through and address the other marginalized groups um, throughout, you know, my tenure, and then also, you know, in the future, we have plans to cover these groups through our work. Um, I'm going to show you an example of an inclusive design sprint. Uh, we did that um, before I actually joined Microsoft, but it was for um, the deaf community in gaming. And uh, here it will kind of take you through the three steps of really recognizing exclusion, learning from the community and creating, you know, one version for everyone or, you know, creating a better version and multiple versions for all. So I'm going to share this video and let me know if for some reason the sound doesn't work, but I did press um, share sound beforehand. Let me see if spinning. An inclusive design sprint case study, Xbox Social Gaming with August De Los Reyes. As the design director for Xbox, we decided to focus on gamers and particularly deaf and hard of hearing gamers. Games are no longer just irritating. 
they're a vital part of sort of society at large. Giving an, an opportunity to share my experience with other people who are going to take this and uh, hopefully turn this into something that's really useful for me and for other people who have my disability as well. Accessibility is not the goal of inclusive design, but rather observing how people with different levels of ability navigate a typical situation and use that analog as a starting point for designing our features. It really isn't about designing for people with disabilities. It's really just about a design process that meets everyone's needs. Coming here and talking about Xbox, because that was the point of the discussion, it seems, however, the discussion was everything else outside of Xbox. My favorite part so far has been uh, the inclusion of the subject matter experts. When you meet somebody in person, the empathy level grows. You hear their story, you feel their story in context of their, as them as a person, in a way that you don't get in text on a forum or on a, a user voice. Some of the inclusive design tools um, were really helpful to help me think about like different slices of the experience. We've got this basic idea that, that makes a lot of sense. We have it kind of frame by frame. You know, thinking about someone that is doing something on a bus. What if, in fact, we transport that to another location? And so running that through a couple of different um, places, whether it be in transit. Someone that has um, a different type of ability that is in a different context in their life. Well, this is kind of an edge case, or this is only a couple of people who might benefit from this thing. Uh, you know, in all actuality, it is it is a lot, a lot of people, and so uh, there there is kind of inherent value in those things as well. The one thing that I would want to come out of this would just be a different way of approaching how you actually start the design process, rather than starting out in that like tunnel development phase where you're just, you know, generating this just for an Xbox One player, um, but just thinking outside of the box and make sure that it is um, inclusive to everyone. And so I just really try to impress on the participants that, you know, the things that they design are, are having a massive impact on a quality of life for thousands and thousands of people. Back with the design director of Xbox, well, I'm super excited with the outcome of the sprint. One of the projects that we came up with from the design sprint is basically including emojis in the virtual keyboard. Which allows deaf or hard of hearing players to understand the emotional context in which text-based communications are made. So the virtual keyboard is something that appears system-wide, and this would be something that deaf gamers would be able to convey that certain level level of emotion that they may not have been able to do beforehand. One way that the Inclusive Design Sprint really made a direct impact uh, was thinking about how we expand the tags or, or sort of the, the standards that would govern these different clubs or these different parties. One of the features that we're talking about bringing to the console, the PC app, the mobile app this holiday season is actually something called the clubs. The idea is that, uh, you know, in this example, you're getting together with other deaf gamers. Um, and, you know, this is just one, one particular example, but you could congregate around any sort of interest or, or common you know, element that you might have with other people. The bottom line around it is the even though these social and emotional needs were specific to deaf gamers uh, in the, with the Xbox console, um, the, these are um, social needs that everyone experiences. I think ideally the more that we do these types of things, the more that people see us doing these types of things, um, the easier it will get. Uh, and, and, and you know, I think it's already clear that Microsoft as a culture uh, does value all humans. Uh, certainly them taking a lead, Microsoft, on accessibility for customers with disability and them doing that as they have been is enormous. We just can't afford to have things that are that important inaccessible to a huge percentage of the population. A team works behind closed glass doors. The screen reads Inclusive, a Microsoft Design Toolkit. WDG Video. So this probably feels like this was a big production. It took a lot of work. And we've done at least 10 of these since this work was actually done. It doesn't have to be long. It can be just a three-day sprint. Um, but it's always done in collaboration with the community so that 
it's authentic and we're creating solutions that they actually want. Because you'll see a lot of the times that if you don't create with the community, we'll be creating things that the community doesn't want um, because we think that they need it. And that's why inclusive design is so important. An inclusive design sprint. All right, guys, I'm just going to um, go to the next slide. I control this with my foot. So sometimes it's a little bit funky. Okay, so how does this relate to GitHub? GitHub is really at the beginning of their journey applying inclusive design within the product development process. There's been some great work around voice and accessibility, especially with Copilot X, which will benefit individuals like me. Coding was never an option for me until voice came out. Um, and I think that everyone is ready for that. And we can move people along the journey by doing these inclusive design sprints and really shifting left. Um, what was interesting is when I joined about a year ago, um, we saw that there was a really high rate of mental health conditions and increase in anxiety due to COVID. And we thought, okay, where can Microsoft play in this? And cognition was one of the ways because we can exasperate mental health conditions and anxiety um, and well-being issues when we are making things cognitively challenging for individuals. And through my research, I found this amazing uh, paper that was done by um, a few university students where they took a inclusive design cognition model that um, was actually done um, to help identify the biases in Windows 10. And it's called Gender Mag. And they applied this to GitHub. And it was really interesting. Um, you know, the first step in trying to summarize this down um, is they wanted to recognize exclusion. So they identified where areas that they felt that people were getting excluded from GitHub. And they hypothesized that individuals with different learning styles might be excluded. And what they did, um, the team met with different types of learners, around 75 of them, to understand their experience with GitHub. And they identified that some newcomers to GitHub are experiencing excessive cognitive load as the site is not set up for guided learners. And what happens and in Windows' case was Windows saw that women wouldn't recommend Windows 10 at the same rate that men would. So they're like, oh man, do we need to make this pink or like make the shapes a little bit more warm um, as male executives say. So they worked with Dr. Margaret Burnett um, and figured out that it was actually that guided learners weren't considered in the de design and development of Windows 10. And it happened to be that you know, a larger portion of women than men are guided learners. So they were leaving a lot of women out. This was also identified using the um, methodology of inclusive design for GitHub and the experiences there. So they created um, a prototype version of GitHub, which considers guided learners, not just tinkerers. And they saw that percentage of completed tasks rise from 67 to 95 percent for the guided learners group. So, you know, when we think about students, they definitely don't have a lot of budget. They were looking into this and found that, okay, there's another way how we can make GitHub a little bit more inclusive. And I think by doing inclusive design sprints and partnering with the community and using the existing inclusive design practices that you have access to at Microsoft, we could create more inclusive experiences by identifying these mismatches and apply inclusive design methodology to product processes, especially when you think about how amazing the future is going to be with AI. And if you add inclusive design there, we'll be able to democratize development. And GitHub being an open source platform, it's the perfect place to democratize development. And, you know, my team and myself are here to help with that.
we have a lot of the inclusive design tools and activities on inclusive.microsoft.com. Um, we have co-collaboration groups. Here's just a list of a few of them with people with disabilities that um, can co-collaborate on your projects. You can get these insights. And if you end up, you know, really using the resources in the toolkit, let us know um, as we would like to chat about it more um, and, and see ways that we can improve it. Thank you. Thank <music> you.